In section 9 of chapter 4, we're going to graph and solve quadratic inequalities. And just like when we graphed uh, linear inequalities, you needed to know how to graph linear equations first. The same is true here. In order to graph quadratic inequalities, you really need to have a handle on graphing the, uh, the quadratic equations. So if you don't have a handle on that, make sure you review back to section 4.1 and 4.2. You are graphing those in either standard form or vertex form or the, um, the uh, uh, intercept form. So make sure you know those well, and if you do, then this is really easy. Because if you know how to graph the equations, graphing the inequalities, the only difference is, first you're going to graph the parabola as if it were an, equa uh, an equation, then making sure, oh, making sure, I've got a little note here, making sure that if it's greater than or less than, you're, remember that you're, you use a dotted line there to show that we're going to come up to this line, but we're gonna, not going to be on the line. If it is greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, then it is a solid line, just as if it were an inequality with your linear, linear equations, uh, linear inequalities. So make sure that you remember dotted. So you just graph the parabola, test a point, and then shade regarding uh, shade either that point, uh, that's that side that, uh, that is true if it's true, or the other side if it's not true. So let's just do one. And I'm going to go, once again, I'm going to go pretty quick through the actual graphing process. Um, so hopefully you, you know how to do that. So if we have y is less than negative x squared minus 4x, step one is just to graph it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, because this is in standard form, you're going to use the negative, two, uh, negative b over 2a. So negative b over 2a would be a negative of a negative 4 is positive 4 over 2 times a negative 1. So 4 over negative 2 is going to be negative 2 is your x for your vertex, and so you put in negative 2 for the x, negative 2 squared is 4, so that'd be a negative 4, minus a uh, negative times a negative is a positive, so plus 8, so you're going to have negative 2, 4 for your vertex, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, so here's my vertex, and we know that the point is going to go through the, the y-intercept is 0, so we know it's going to go through this point, <clears throat> and so we can mirror that point, on the other side, and here's our other point. So here's our parabola. We've got to be careful because this is a less than, not a less than or equal to. So dot that line. Do, 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 do. So there's your parabola. We graphed it. Step two is to test a point. I would just check uh, an easy one. So let's just do negative one. So negative one, zero. So y is zero. Uh, and then do negative one. So is zero less than negative 1 squared is 1, and a negative, so negative 1, uh, negative 4 times a negative 1 is a positive 4, so that's going to be 3. Is 0 less than 3? Why, yes it is. So if it's true, this is where our point was, our point was on the inside, so we're going to shade inside that parabola. Deal? So that's all there is to it. So make sure that the only Make sh the only tricky thing is, make sure, and as silly as it is, make sure that you do dotted or solid depending on your sign there. And then after you figure out your parabola, check a test point and then uh, graph it. All right. The reason we do some of these types of things is there really are real life situations. And I know in your real life, you may be thinking, ah, but there won't be. And maybe they won't, but we're going to learn it anyway because it's fun. Here we go. And it's a great way to get uh, a math credit. So. <laughs> here's our here's our real life situation. A desk with a glass top can support a weight of uh, a weight that's represented by W is less than or equal to 250 x squared, where W is the weight in pounds and x is the thickness of the glass in inches. So I have already set up with these. The hardest part about graphing it is setting up the graph. And just because that takes a little bit of time, and I didn't want you to spend all that time in the video watching that, I've actually set it up for you. So make sure on these problems that you dis, you, you're going to determine what does each of your axes represent, and you need to label them. And then you need to kind of get a grasp of how, how does the, the um, you're not going to always go by ones. 
So what is your rate of change going to be? So I already have my x-axis is going to be the glass thickness in inches. And I've set it up where uh, I, each, each one tick is a half of an inch because I happen to know that it's going to go up pretty quick. And then my y-axis is the weight. And because that's going to go up really fast, I've got, uh, I've got these marked by hundreds going up. So setting up your graph is the hardest part of this. Once you've got it set up, now it's just an easy matter of, of putting in the numbers. If you'll notice, I didn't put it on, um, on a, with, with negatives on either my X or my Y, and that's because my X axis is glass thickness, and thickness of glass cannot be negative. So there's no sense in going negative and weight cannot be negative, so there's no sense in going negative the y direction. So in real life situations, almost every time, you're just going to have the positive, the positive axes. All right, so I would just put in, uh, put in one and two for your x squared and find points because you know zero, zero and zero is gonna be one point. And then let's use a cute little blue so you can see it on my graph. And then if I put in one, so 1 squared is 1, and 1 times 250 is 250, so at 1, my W is going to be 250, so there's a point here. And 2, 2 if I, if I go 2 over on my X, 2, uh, putting in the 2 for the X is X squared is 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 250 is going to be 1,000. So at 2, we're going to be up to 1,000, and it does say it's equal to, so my parabola is going to be solid, not dotted. And then the last step is just to determine, okay, are the solutions to this going to be on this side or that side? And we simply test a point. Let's test one, zero, and say, is zero less than or equal to 250 times one squared? Zero is indeed less than 250. So this is included in my graph. So all of this would be shaded. So anything that falls in this category, so um, so my two inch two inches of glass is going to is going to support 100 pounds or 200 pounds or 300 pounds, and that is that is the solution for that graph. All right, the the next step is we want to graph systems of inequalities. Well, I want you to. You might not want to, but that's okay. You can do it anyway. Remember, you don't have to want to. You just have to do it. So there we go. All right. And here again, I'm going to graph them real quick. So if you're having trouble with, huh, how did you, where did you get those points and how do we graph it? Then that you need to go back to 4.1 or 4.2 to remember. All right. I have these two inequalities that I want to graph and I want to find out where do they intersect? What is the solution of the of the system of inequalities. And that's what we're asking when we're putting a system together. What combination of numbers will make both of these inequalities true? So we're going to graph both of them on the same graph and see where they intersect. Just like we did with linear inequalities to see, well, where does it, where does the, where do the two solutions cross? So in this case, we're going to find, uh, let's see, x squared, there is no b term. So b is zero. So we're going to go zero, um, zero over, and then putting in the zero, we have zero is negative uh, three. So here's our vertex. And if we put in, oh, let's say two, two squared, uh, two squared is four, four minus three is one. So here's a point and we're going to mirror it over here. And this is a less than, not equal to, so this is dotted. So there's my parabola like this. So I have one parabola that looks like this. And then I test a point in, hoo hoo, look, zero, zero is an easy one to test. So zero is greater than zero minus three. Is zero greater than negative three? Why, yes it is. So inside is where we're gonna, is where we're going to, uh, to shade for this one. So let's just kind of remember that. Uh, and then only, only uh, shade in the parts that are overlapped. So now let's move to the other one. We've got uh, negative b over 2a is going to be negative 4 over negative 2 times 4. Ooh, negative 4 over negative 4 is 1. And so 1 here is going to be negative 2 plus 4 plus 2 
is 6 minus 2 is 4. So 1, 4, 1 over, 1, 2, 3, 4 up is my vertex. And because this is in standard form, I can see that this is going to cross the y-axis at 2. So 1, 2, I can have a point right here and mirror that point right here. So here's my parabola and I look to see this does say equal to. So this parabola is going to have a solid line. So solid line this way. And 0, 0 is included in here. So, so far we're, we're going to we're going to um, shade everything inside here. So let's see if it's going to be inside this one or outside this one. So is it going to be this part or this part? So let's test 0, 0. 0 is less than or equal to 0 plus 0 plus 2. So is 0 less than 2? Yes, it is. So it needs to be inside this parabola and inside this parabola. So my solution is any combination of numbers that are inside this kind of strange elliptical type shape. All right? So where they overlap is your solution for your, um, for your uh, system of inequalities. All right. Now, one last thing today. We want to solve... So we can't always draw these graphs to, to solve these. Um, so the solution is what's in there. Well, what if we had um, some equations and we wanted to just, let's just solve them algebraically and not worry with all these graphs. So let's find out. There we go. This is the one I'm looking for. So what if we have 3x squared minus 9x is less than 12? All right. So the first thing we're going to do here, let's just get our cute little steps here. First, we're going to come up with a solution. And the first way we're going to do this, we want to find out, well, what values for x make this a true statement? That's always what we're doing when we're solving. And with an inequality, it's no different. But what we're going to do to solve an inequality, we're going to first set that inequality equal to 0. So 3x squared minus 9x. Let's not deal with the inequality yet. Let's just solve it the way we know to solve it. And you know how to do that. Let's just follow the steps. Put it in standard form, factor it, and then set each factor equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 12 from both sides. So 3x squared minus 9x minus 12 equals 0. And so now we just factor it. And we look to see, oh, actually, I can factor out a monomial because 3 will go into all three of those. So this is 3 times x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. Whoops. And so we still have the 3. Don't lose that. We're going to factor this and say we know that x times x equals x squared. We know that 4 times 1 or 2 times 2, 2 times 2 or 4 times 1, because we have a negative here, we've got a positive and a negative sign. So we're going to subtract to get a negative 3. So the only, one, the only two that we subtract to get 3 are the 4 and 1. And we want it to be negative, so we want the 4, the bigger number, to be negative. So this is 4x minus 1x gives me the negative 3x. All right, so that's how we, that's how we factor it. Then we set each, each factor equal to 0 to solve. Now remember, 3 can never equal 0. So we're done with the 3 for now. We can ignore it. But the x plus 1, that could possibly equal 0. If that equals 0, then this whole thing would equal 0 and make it a true statement. Or if this part, x minus 4 equals 0, that would make the whole statement equal to 0. So now we just subtract 1. So either x equals negative 1 or x equals 4. Now, you might think, woohoo, we're done, we've got negative 1 and 4, but here's the deal. These are our, these are our points of interest. <laughs> so what happens is this. Because we have an inequality, we want not just these points. So first of all, we've got a number line, and what we're going to do is we're going to, on that number line, we're going to mark the negative 1, and we're going to mark the 4. Because in our inequality, in our inequality, these are going to be the endpoints. All right? And I put them open because it's not equal to, it's less than. So these are my endpoints. So now what you need to do is kind of what you did in the graphs, in the, in the large graphs, um, you're going to test each of these three sections of your graph 
to see, is this true here? Is this true here? Is this true here? So I would pick, oh, pick easy ones, like negative two here. So you're gonna put the negative two, pick a negative two. You're gonna pick negative two and put it all the way back into your original equate or inequality. So three times negative two squared minus nine times a negative two is that less than 12. So two squared is four times three is 12. Negative nine times a negative two is a positive 18. Is that less than 12? We don't even really have to add it up to know that, ooh, no, that's not. So this is a no. And then I would pick, zero is in here. Let's pick zero, that's an easy one. So zero minus zero, is zero less than 12? Yes, it is. So this is, a true, this is true in here. Everything in between these two numbers is going to be true. If one of them is true, as long as you have the right endpoints, if one of them is true, everything within those endpoints is going to be true. And then you pick one on this side, I would pick five. So three times five squared minus nine times five, is that less than 12? Uh, five squared is 25 times three is 75, minus five times nine is 45. 75 minus 45 is 30, is 30 less than 12? Hmm. No, it's not. So this is not true either. So the places where my statement are true are in between negative one and four. And the way we show that algebraically is negative one is going to be less than x, and x is going to be less than four. And so this inequality here is your solution to show all of the x's in between negative one and four are going to make this statement true. So this is the answer that you're looking for right there Whew, after all of that, okay? Let's do another one. I want you to do it. I'm really glad that you can pause and look at this, and so I can just erase the whole thing, but you can go back and pause and look at it if you didn't get it all. I hope you're doing that every time. Make sure that you're watching the steps and seeing, what did she do? Why did she do it? Okay, here we go. Let's do 2x squared minus 7x is greater than 4. All right, pause and do it on your own and then come back, and I'll walk you through this one. I'll, I'll walk you through. Um, did you do it? Did you pause it? I hope you did, I hope you got a great answer. Here we go. Here's what's gonna happen. First set it equal to zero and just make it, uh, make it zero and you're going to uh, put it into standard form. So you're gonna end up with two x squared minus seven x and you should have subtracted the four from both sides and so that that equals zero. And then the next thing you should have done was factor it. And this one doesn't have anything in common in the monomials or in their coefficients. So you're just going to factor it into two binomials. So one of them is gonna be two x, because two x times x is two x squared. And now this one is either gonna be two and two, or one and four. One is positive and one is negative. And you can just kind of arbitrarily put them in there because you know when you get to the end, oh, I got a ne negative and I should have a positive, to switch the signs and it'll work. So um, we want to end up with seven in the middle. So if I take two times two, that's four, that's not gonna be big enough. So let's do four times two is eight, minus one is our seven x, and the, and the larger number that the eight is gonna be negative, so now when I subtract my seven, it's gonna be negative. All right, so you should have ended up when you factored with two x plus one, x minus four. Now set each of those equal to zero, did you do that? And then solve. So x equals negative one half or x equals four, all right? And so hopefully you didn't stop there. So if this were an equation, you would be finished. Those would be your two answers. But it's not an equation, it's an inequality. And so what that represents is the two endpoints. And this is not equal to, so we want open circles on negative one half and on four. And here's where, okay, we're either going to be shaded inside or outside. Well, let's check them and see which one. So, oh, look, I would just check negative one. So then this, this goes back into the original to check and see, well, where is it true and where is it false? So negative one, uh, two times negative one squared is just two. Uh, minus seven times negative one is actually plus seven. 
And is that greater than four? Seven, eight, nine, is nine greater than four? Yes, it is. So this end of your, of your graph is going to be shaded. Zero is in between there. Zero is always an easy one to check. Zero minus zero is nothing. Is zero greater than four? No, it's not. So we're not going to shade the middle. And then let's check five again. Wait for the same endpoint as last time. So two times five squared, five squared is 25 times two is 50. Minus seven times five is 35. Mm, 50 minus 35 is 2015. Not 2015, but you know I was doing that anyway. Haha. <laughs> Is 15 greater than 4? Yes, it is. So this end is shaded. Now, how do you show this? So this is your answer. How do you show this algebraically? I'll show you. Everything less than negative 1 half is true. So part of your answer is x is less than negative 1 half. Or anything greater than Four. So x is greater than 4. So here's your solution if the ends are shaded and not the middle. So if, you're, if your ends are shaded, then it's going to be an or statement. If the middle is shaded, then it's an and statement and you can just put it, you can string it all together. But uh, if the ends are shaded, you're going to have either x is less than negative 1 or x is greater than 4. And it'll go that way on your, uh, on your, uh, number line. All right. I, you know what? I, at the end, I always think, oh, are there any questions? But you can't ask me. So uh, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments or zap me a text or write it down and bring it to class. And I'll be glad to answer questions then. Otherwise, good luck. I'll see you soon.